Good morning, fellow option traders. This is Jeff, and welcome to the daily scan for Monday, July 29th, 2013. Here's our economic calendar for today, pending home sales and Dallas Fed Manufacturing Survey. Both have gold stars, um, lesser of an impact than a red star. That's all I can really say, because that's really all there is. Let's take a look at the futures around the world. Asia closed negatively. Nikkei down 3.32. Uh, they do uh, mention something about it over here as a big deal because it fell below the uh, level of 14,000, which is a psychological level. I don't know that it's any sort of level of resistance or support. Not really sure about that. But anyway, uh, anything above a half a percent is probably out of the norm except for the Nikkei. So we have a lot of them that are more than a half a percent in Asia. Over in Europe, most of them are up and we're right around that half a percent for almost everything except for the FTSE. So um, we don't really know what's going on there not following suit but it's strange that Europe just kind of snubs Asia most of the time since I've been doing this I haven't uh, in the past ever paid much attention to the continental I guess you might say direction but um, uh, it is interesting to see that Asia and Europe mostly do the opposite thing. Asia's down, Europe is up. And the U.S.? Well, let's take a look at the U.S. And here we are. We're looking uh, at a negative open here for the major indexes. Gold is at 1331, still above 13,000. And our oil is below 105, which I guess is a good thing. And gas prices weren't really all that bad for my trip this weekend, so maybe they don't pick on me. I'm not sure exactly. But anyway, I uh, took my two grandsons along with, with us to go pick up my granddaughter and celebrate her birthday back in Wisconsin. And we got back uh, about dinner time last night. And today we're going to the state fair, so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do my 3.30 IWM trade, but we'll discuss that in a moment. All right, um, let's take a look at what we currently have in play. Goldman Sachs is, uh, looks like as though it's trying to recover from being in deep doo-doo here. We have, um, what do we have on the daily chart? Okay, we're right about at our... Uh, break even slash short strike here, which is at uh, 165, and the price currently is at 165.26, as indicated by this bubble over here. It looks as though there might be some momentum momentum coming out of it, so maybe we will hang around this 165 and maybe end up below it. I'm not panicking at this time. Okay, IWM, let's save that for later. LinkedIn, I'm pretty concerned about that right now. If I look at this uh, chart right here, we have a lot of up, you know, positive momentum, and the um, current price direction is up, so that means additional momentum to the upside. And that one is losing right now just because of, um, well, the price movement is getting darn close to my short strike here. So I may have to do something about that today. I hate losers, man. I just really hate them. Now, here's what I'm thinking about when I do an iron condor. If I think it's trading in a range, what... I, you know, what I saw here when I got into it was this range, basically. Um, so I figured, well, it's going to continue 
maybe August was a stretch. Maybe I should have done something closer. But what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to look at this range, the high and the low, and I'm going to make a decision on whether I want to get out or not if it breaks that range. So that's what I'll be doing from now on. I have to eat this one, I guess. But from now on, that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, TLT. We have... Let's take a look here at that. We have a... Oh, ob. Ob. Let me correct that. We have an ob. Not, oh, August. Yeah, that's right. That's what it is. August bear call on this and um, we got in here on this candle based on this indication here and based on an overall downtrend we did a bear call on that and so far it's playing out fine I'm not concerned about that particular trade at this time uh, and then let's take a little bit of a peek at Netflix here and I want to show you I'll let the um, the short strike expire on Friday, hoping that prices price would continue. It's moved down. Let's we'll take a peek at the chart. Okay, so the July four put calendar expired here, and from here on, I'm sitting on a long put. So there's a couple of ways that we could take a look at this. Uh, let's go to the Analyze tab and Simulated Trade. Okay, so we're looking at this September here. Here's our position. We're losing, it says 13 cents here of theta. So um, we have one contract, so that's $13 in theta. So if we look over here, uh, our theta is $13.55. So, you know, that's uh, close enough. Um, I don't want to split too many hairs on this one. So um, what's happening is that each day we lose $13 on this trade provided price stays exactly where it is. And that is the key to what I'm going to talk about is price going to stay where it's at. Well, we could s sit here and say, all right, let's... Um, Let's move this up to here. Oh yeah, here. Let me reset the parameters here. Let's move this up to a week into the future. So we're at 1874 right now. If we go a week, which is August 5th, we'll be at 1967. So approximately a hundred dollars we would lose. We'll go back to the simulated trade tab and we will take a look at theoretical price okay we said that uh, uh, let me reset this we said that we would lose a hundred dollars a day so uh, right now the price is 768 they picked the midpoint between the spread here between the bid and ask spread it's 768 so and we're talking about um, a theta of $13 a day, but that's going to increase as we move forward. So if we move up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, we are now at 675. So there's our $100 loss roughly, approximately. And that's if price doesn't move anywhere. Now, of course, if price starts to move down, then that starts to move up. So if we were Oops, come on. If we were to say, like, let's say it moves down five, well, then we start make we actually uh, make up a little bit of our loss. And five, you know, that five dollars on this stock, it sneezes that during the day, so um, it could easily move down five dollars, easily. It could easily move up five dollars, and that's where the clincher comes in. So if we were to, all right, some I, I hear people out there saying, well, you could sell weeklies at 225 against that for the next several weeks. Well, we, let's take a look at that. So we're at 225. I want to go back to my layout because 
that's just what I'm used to looking at. If we're looking at the 225 for this week, um, midpoint is about 35 cents or whatever. But anyway, let's say that uh, we're not dealing with midpoint. We're looking at the bid, and it's 29 cents. So we can make an assumption that theoretically we could collect 29 cents for the next, I believe it would be seven weeks. So I threw that together on a spreadsheet. And here we go. My current loss is at 1967. The max loss is $2,642. So if price stays exactly where it's at, we would end up with an additional $675 loss on this. Now can I make that up doing weekly uh, calendars or selling weekly 225s against it for the next seven weeks? Well, we're talking $29 a week, not including transaction costs. And we're talking about seven weeks, so that gives us $203. So that means that if price stays exactly the same and we do this, we would lose an additional $400. Well, actually $450 or so, plus transaction costs, which is a buck and a quarter every week, which isn't you know all that bad for me. And if you guys are paying ticket prices, give uh, Thinkorswim a call and tell them you want to go to... Even at a buck and a half, if you're not trading a lot of uh, contracts for each transaction, you're actually better off, like me, small-time uh, little guy out there, you're better off doing the per-contract price than the ticket plus per-contract price. And I believe the last time I worked this out, if you're trading less than 20 contracts, you're better off with the individual contract price. Okay, done with that commercial. So here we are. Uh, what do we do? Well, what the heck is Netflix going to do? I think we can afford $13 a day for a couple of days to see which direction this thing is going to go. If it looks like as though it's going to pick up a little bit of momentum, and here we're indicating that momentum is starting to pick up. But if we can um, start moving towards the zero line and, and continue down, then we might want to consider uh, just hanging on to the long put is probably better off and less risk than... Uh, selling weeklies against it because once you sell that weekly you're sort of locked into the trade it's going to cost you a lot to get out of it uh, in that uh, whatever money you may have collected for that um, sh short when you want to buy it back it, it may just end up well you're not going to get your total credit for it is what I'm saying so if you do that then um, your $29, you're not going to get it back. It's not like as though you can say, well, you know, I collected 29 I want to keep it. No, it's going to cost you money to get this thing back. So I think the best thing to do, in my mind anyway, for right now, is to just uh, look at what's going on here on the charts and uh, believe <laughs> or, you know, just not believe, but check it out and make sure that it is heading down. Okay, now let's go back and take a look at IWM, the daily credit spread on IWM. I was able to uh, jump in here Friday and do one, so I wanted to let you know that the IWMs that I have done Let's go back here. Let's jump over to the account statement here. The IWMs that I have done. Let's take a look here. All right. We are in IWM. There should be three of them up there. Let's go back 
a little bit further. There we go. Uh, there's three of them. <clears throat> so the two for July 4th that expired. Uh, my lowest here was on the short side was 103. And um, in one here at 104. And we closed at 104.12 on Friday. So both of these were successful. So that was... Um, 12 and 13 for a total, grand total of 25 so $25 are made on these and right now we're in here with this 103 we're at 104 here so we're looking okay currently if we were to pop over here to a chart looks like we might open at 103.85 still above the 103 and if we were to take a look and see here we've had all white um, uh, circles here on IWM at the end of each day even though these are magenta down here we're still white up here so we've been going with um, bull puts at the end of the day so so far working out now if we get if I get a magenta one here and a magenta one down here, I'm not going to trade that day. I want to see which way it's going to go. And if I get another double magenta the next day, then we switch over to bear calls. And we don't really close anything. So that's where that is. All right, we are already 16 minutes into this video. Was there anything else that I wanted to cover here? I don't think so. I do not think so. Okay, so we're going to jump over to the A-plus list because earnings season is pretty much behind us. So let's see where we are. Uh, Apple can't really determine anything here. Still looking for establishment of a direction so we'll take a pass on that one. Amazon Oh, nice big move here. What do we have here? Uh, 4 cent estimate minus 2 actual. Go figure. Go figure. I think that the future of Amazon though is looking bright since they're not talking about that tax thing anymore. I don't know that that's ever going to happen the sales tax thing. Uh, Baidu uh, had good earnings. Pretty good earnings. They gapped up. We're waiting to see what's if that's going to maintain. If we get a movement down on stochastic and then a hook back up. So let's throw a target out there. And our target is right would be right around this area here. Alright, so we'll be just be watching for that target in the future here. Celgene. Acting very bullish here. And they got some sort of drug approval too. So now we also on this one are looking for a target down here. So we'll just move right along and wait for these things to head for our targets. All right, we're still on a downtrend here. We want a target up here, up here. Not ready for prime time. There's like no momentum here. No momentum. Huh. That's pretty strange for us for this particular stock, Chipotle. Uh we came down here and we did hit our target, but uh, couldn't do anything about it. I'm a little concerned about all this noise in here. That's not. I'm concerned about that. I'm going to remove this target. But when you get get it bouncing around, you're not getting the nice waves up and then waves down, waves up. That's a little bit of an area of concern. So I'm just going to take a pass on Chipotle for right now for even looking for a target or anything. Uh, gold. 
a lot of talk about gold just not going anywhere for quite a while as long as Uncle Ben is still pumping money into the economy. And now um, Obama says that he's not happy with Uncle Ben, so he is already lining up somebody that I'm quite sure will continue the monetary policy of printing and printing and printing uh, no matter what happens, at least Uncle Ben was willing to consider uh, slowing it down or stopping it. But I'm sure whoever Obama puts in is going to be a printer on steroids. Uh, so, um, we're looking at gold probably not doing anything. But again, you know, like um, the last one we looked at, I forget which the heck one that was, Chipotle. We're getting a lot of noise in here, not big, wide waves, just a lot of noise. So taking a pass on gold for right now. In the world of Google, or in Google's world, or like I mentioned, the new name for the planet Earth should be Planet Google. <laughs> it sounds like some sort of science fiction comedy or something. Uh, we just turned over here and looks like we might be going into a negative trend. So we would be looking for a target up here, provided that the trend continues. So let's wait to see if that develops. Goldman Sachs, uh, the one that I'm freaking out a little bit about. We may, uh, looks like uh, there might be some momentum coming out of it. Doesn't mean that we're going to get negative price movement, but there is momentum that appears to be coming out of this particular stock. We're keeping a close eye on it. LinkedIn. Alright, so we have an uptrend. We will be looking, well, we have earnings coming up, so that's what we're looking for. Let's just blow right on past that one and wait for earnings to do their thing. MasterCard, we have earnings coming up as well. So we'll take a pass on that. Netflix, we already looked at that. Now we have an uptrend here. This is a good candidate for a bull put. So I'm just going to throw an alert in here. And it's probably a good alert to uh, consider just getting out of that long put as well. Uh, okay, I just uh, lost myself there for a minute. Let's make it 249. And we now have an alert on there. Okay, price line, uptrend, wallowing around this 45, don't like that for a directional trade, may actually be moving down. What do we have over here in the weekly? We have a hook down, and we have a uh, a lot of confirmation for a down movement here on Priceline, but they have earned, you know, yeah, earnings coming up next uh, week and uh, two weeks away. The eighth, I think it would be. Well, let's see. It's be next week. Uh, sure as heck, I'm not touching that one. Panera. Wow. I guess I must have been sleeping or something, huh? Wow, that's a big move. Not looking good for Panera. All right, so do we have a play here? No, we'd be looking for a hook up here on that line. All right, Tesla. We have earnings coming up, not touching it, and Visa. They just had their earnings. How'd they do? Hello. There we go. Eh, not too bad. Not too bad. So I would like to see movement above the 80 here with both percent K and D. 
and then a swing back down here to give us an entry. But there's a lot of time for this one to mature for us. So, okay, we only ended up with one new alert for today. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, and happy trading.